Liberal Senator Cory Bernardi has long voiced his concern about Australia's immigration intake and his fears that this nation will repeat the mistakes of Europe. He's now calling on the Turnbull government to rethink the decision to accept 12,000 Syrian refugees. Cory Bernardi, welcome. Thanks very much, Chris. Good to be with you. The Australian government is looking at taking another 12,000 refugees from Syria under this special humanitarian program. There's been some discussion about what kind of mix that will be. Are you concerned that there will be too many Muslims in that mix? Well, Chris, I supported the initial decision because it was going to be targeting persecuted minorities. But I do think that Cabinet now needs to reconsider the decision to take in 12,000 additional refugees on the basis of evidence that's come to light over the last week or so. Firstly, uh, we know that a number of people claiming to be refugees have used the same falsified documents uh, to enter Europe. We also know that the FBI in America has said they cannot effectively screen or vouch for the bona fides of those claiming to be refugees because there is no database, that uh, there is a, a plethora of fraudulent and uh, falsified documents and you can't exactly go into Syria to you know, prove up the backstory. Now, if they can't do that, and we know that uh, the UN is also making the determination about who's coming here, then I think Cabinet needs to reassess our decision. Scott Morrison has said this morning that the people who are coming here will get greater checks than anyone who comes to the, to the country. So that's not sufficient enough for you? Well, let's look at the American example. The FBI there have said that they cannot vouch for the bona fides of individuals. And, you know, in our previous refugee intake, um, we've had examples where people who have been accepted as refugees have gone on to commit uh, terrorist acts or planned terrorist acts in this country. Now, why do we think that suddenly this is going to be any different? The other point I'd make is this, that Australia is a sovereign nation and we offer to help out in a humanitarian program. But what we've effectively been told is that the UNHCR, a bunch of unelected bureaucrats, are going to make the determination about who is going to be sent to Australia or not. And a lot of the most persecuted minorities in the Middle East, the Jews, the Christians, the Yazidis, don't even go to the UNHCR camps. They don't register there because they're afraid, they're scared for their lives by the Muslim communities that are there. So what are you saying, that the Australian government should now take no more refugees or it should take a smaller number of refugees and that they should only be Christians? Uh, I do believe that we should be reassessing our humanitarian refugee intake and the, the decision to take an additional 12,000. Uh, there are many places in the Middle East where Muslims can feel safe firstly. Uh, the Christian persecuted Christian minorities, many of whom are not registered in the UNHCR camps, are prohibited from effectively accessing our service because they're not registered in H UNHCR camps. So I think we've got to target those much more specifically. And in the absence of being able to determine who comes to this country uh, and, uh, you know, prove their backstory effectively, I think we've got to put a stop to it. Are you concerned, though, that you'll be seen as being anti-Muslim because of what you're saying? There'll be community leaders here who are saying that you're sending out a message that's not just against Syrian refugees, but is against the existing Muslim population in Australia. Well, people will say whatever they like, Chris, and uh, for many years I've been voicing my concerns about extremist elements in this country and the lack of political will to confront that. Um, and, of course, I've been called all sorts of names for, for my trouble uh, by my colleagues and the media. But the point is I've been right about it, and uh, it is now a widespread community sentiment. We have extremist elements at work in this country. Why would we risk bringing in more to add to their ranks, even potentially, um, and, you know, bear the financial and social burden that comes with that. What's your answer, though? Because we saw some fairly ugly protests over mm. the course of the weekend, and surely you don't want to see that. There has to be community harmony. You have to make sure that the Muslim community that's already here does feel part of the community. And for in, for, apart from any other reason, you want to make sure that if they see that there's problems in their ranks, that they alert the police to that. Absolutely, Chris. And um, if you go back in history, five years ago, I went and studied the impact of migration 
and if there was a lack of political will about dealing with some community concerns, the fact that extremism begets extremism. It's usually an equal and opposite reaction. And I didn't want to see that in, in this country. We're now starting to see elements of it. It was entirely preventable if politicians had the courage of their convictions to even discuss the matter. But of course you couldn't because every time you raise the issue about uh, extremism, you were called an Islamophobe or a bigot. Uh, I was told that I should be booted out of the Liberal Party for daring to voice an opinion that the majority of Australians are concerned about. It's about time our political uh, leaders woke up to that fact. Are you finding that more people are contacting you now because of the views that you do hold? Well, there's, I've always had you know, many thousands of people get in touch with me, but certainly people are much more upfront about it. No longer are people trapped in the whisper zone where they come up and say, good on you, mate, keep going, we need you. They are absolutely upfront about it and um, are happy to, to voice it. And, that's the first step in dealing with this problem, is that we need to be able to talk about it. Looking at the source of the problem in Syria and Iraq, now the former Defence Minister Kevin Andrews has been writing in the Australian Financial Review today saying that we need to reassess the tactics there to embrace Russia, which is now involved in Syria, to look at keeping on the Assad regime and also at putting more troops, special operations troops, from Australia and the United States into that battle zone. Is that something that you would support? Well, firstly, I do believe it takes international cooperation. So, yes, I would embrace Russia because we have a common enemy here, and that's the Islamic State. I also think that the Assad regime uh, prevents, you know, a power vacuum, if you will, which would nature abhors a vacuum, and so it would be replaced by uh, an extreme, uh, you know, another extreme regime that is possibly even less cooperative than the Assad regime. When it comes to troops on the ground, I don't want to see widespread deployment of Australian forces in the Middle East. I think the first priority is for us to up the bombing raids and bombing missions because it has been a lacklustre and half-hearted effort, I think, by the, the global community to date. Secondly, I want to see the Middle Eastern nations themselves commit troops. Uh, we spent a decade training the Iraqi forces and as soon as we leave and they're confronted with something, they turn around and run away. It's just not good enough. But finally, do you really see any coherent strategy emerging at the moment? People are talking a good game, but really there's nothing in place, is there, that's going to resolve this issue? I haven't seen anything uh, to date, the, the will from the world community, um, that's going to you know, defeat Islamic State at the moment. The first thing we've got to do is call out extremism wherever we see it, at home and abroad. We need to target specifically the leaders of Islamic State and that means a full-on commitment to bombing raids and you know maybe the use of special forces where appropriate. Corey Bernardi, thank you. It's a pleasure.